This week at Starbase, demolition continues at Pad 1, hardware begins arriving for the air separation plant, and construction continues on Pad 2, Gigabay, and Booster 19. With the accelerated pace of construction for Booster 19 now, what kind of progress were they able to make in the seven days since our last update? Well, let's dig into this week's update and find out. Starting off with fabrication updates, stacking operations for Booster 19 really stepped up. Three more sections of the next Super Heavy's liquid oxygen tank were transferred from Star Factory to Mega Bay 2, as well as part of its landing tank, as SpaceX looks to get this rocket built at record pace and minimize any delays from the failure of Booster 18. Meanwhile, construction of Gigabay continues at a rapid pace, with more steel going up every day for the massive building. In Mega Bay 2, crews continue to swap out older work stands for the new ones that have been constructed and optimized for Block 3 starships. Down at the launch complex, the partial demolition of Pad 1's infrastructure continues to push forward. This week, workers began removing the large diameter pipes that were used to feed the water-cooled flame deflector under the mount. The pipes were later seen being driven up the road away from the site. Over at Pad 2, a crane was used to remove the rear hood from the booster methane quick disconnect structure, presumably to allow access for crews to work in that area. With the first part of the ship quick disconnect arm now installed, the launch site crane was used to lift piping for installation on the latest part of Stage 0. Meanwhile, down below, the chopsticks were seen undergoing some actuation testing. And later on in the week, the hydraulic actuators were removed from the Pad 2 chopsticks, seemingly indicating that the testing seen previously had uncovered some kind of issue. Over at the air separator site, there have been either some design changes or something wasn't up to spec as some partial concrete demolition took place. Meanwhile, hardware for the air separation plant began to roll in this week, including what seems to be large centrifugal compressors and some small tanks. Up the road at the Massey outpost, throughout the week, crews continued scrapping the remains of Booster 18. Pieces continued to be cut off and lowered to the ground until finally the aft was all that remained and it too was removed and shipped off the site. Meanwhile, the site was still an active testing location for SpaceX as they kicked off the Block 3 ship validation process. The S39.1 test article was moved into position at the ship cryo station on Monday. Two days later, the test article was loaded with cryogenics for the first time. Over the next few days, two additional rounds of cryoproofing followed as SpaceX looks to verify the changes of the Block 3 Starship. Back at the launch complex, SpaceX performed another test of the Pad 2 flame deflector on Friday as water was seen shooting out from underneath the new mount. SpaceX also shared footage this week of Raptor 3 validation testing. The video shows a fire that simulated a full-duration ascent burn of a sea-level engine on a Block 3 Starship. Friday also saw the delivery of an interesting new object. This black structure was delivered to the build site and unwrapped before being taken over to Sanchez. Could this be a piece of a new fabrication or test structure? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Switching over to Falcon 9 operations, on Sunday afternoon, Booster 1095 was rolled out to the pad at Launch Complex 39A. About 12 hours later, the rocket lifted off, carrying another 29 satellites to low Earth orbit for the Starlink Group 6-86 mission. The booster and fairing halves were later returned to port for offload. And less than a day later, Booster 1081 launched from Space Launch Complex 4E at the Vandenberg Space Force Base, lofting 27 more satellites to orbit for the Starlink Group 15-10 mission, with the first stage successfully landing on Of Course I Still Love You in the Pacific Ocean. Continuing a busy stretch for the Falcon 9 team, less than five hours later, the Starlink Group 6-95 mission lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And after sending another 29 satellites to orbit, Booster 1077 landed on a short fall of Gravitas and was returned to Port Canaveral along with fairing halves from the mission. The Starlink Group 11-25 mission was the second Vandenberg launch of the week, lifting off on Thursday atop Falcon 9 Booster 1097, which later touched back down on Of Course I Still Love You after sending another 28 satellites to space. In other space news, SpaceX shared this week that construction is underway at Space Launch Complex 37. 
They also shared an animation showing two fully loaded Block 3 stacks fueled and ready for launch at the site. On Monday, Arian Space launched the CompSat-7 mission on their Vega C rocket from Guiana Space Center. The mission delivered an Earth observation satellite to sun-synchronous orbit for the Korea Aerospace Administration. On Wednesday, China's Land Space had the inaugural launch of their partially reusable Methalox Juchuya-3 rocket. The mission carried a mass simulator and successfully delivered it to its intended orbit. As the first stage initiated its landing burn, however, the vehicle experienced an anomaly and was observed as a fireball that plummeted back to Earth with a hard impact near the landing site. NASA announced this week that the samples the OSIRIS-REx mission returned from the asteroid Bennu contained ribose and glucose, sugars that are some of the essentials for life as we know it. While not life itself, this illustrates that the components needed for life are found throughout our solar system. NASA has begun conditioning the crawlerway between the Vehicle Assembly Building and Launch Complex 39B in preparation for the upcoming dress rehearsal for the Artemis II mission. The obsolete mobile launch Platform 1, now covered in concrete ballast blocks, is rolled up and down the path to the pad to ensure it's ready to handle the fully stacked SLS rocket. The Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope has now finished final integration at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. This infrared telescope is scheduled to launch on a Falcon Heavy in the next year and a half and will have a field of view 100 times larger than Hubble at the same resolution. United Launch Alliance announced that preparations are in full swing ahead of their fourth launch of satellites for Amazon's LEO constellation. The mission will launch on an Atlas V and is scheduled for the 15th of this month. Canada's Nord Space announced the establishment of their Space Systems Lab and the planned launch of their Terra Nova satellite as they work towards developing end-to-end -to -end all Canadian space missions. Terra Nova will include Kronos, an edge AI imaging system that is designed to actually analyze the data it collects rather than simply beaming it back to Earth. Vast Space shared that they have completed fit tests of the passive docking hardware for Haven 1, their underdevelopment commercial space station. Firefly Aerospace announced that they have completed 100 test fires of their Miranda rocket engine. This engine will be used to power both Firefly's own Eclipse rocket as well as Northrop Grumman's Antares 330 following the end of the production of the RD-181 engine. And there you have it, another jam-packed space news update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.